So it's been about a year since I've been back on this platform making videos for you guys and I would like to start by just showing you guys what I did while you weren't seeing me which was doing AP Studio Art. Yeah so over the course of the past two years I've completed AP Studio Art twice so I've done a drawing portfolio and I've done a 2D portfolio. You guys have seen most of that work, a lot of it's been on my Instagram, but I've never really talked about it or shown all of it. Um, I'll start with my drawing portfolio. So that I did my sophomore year of high school. If you're not familiar with AP Studio Art, it's essentially a college board class. The curriculum is created at a college level, but brought to high schools across the nation. And your final grade is graded the same, it's like your exam. But throughout the year, you know, every teacher will put in grades throughout the year differently. The AP Studio Art that I took, because it is changing next year, but the AP Studio Art that I took consisted of two parts, so you had your breath and your concentration. So breath is 12 pieces, concentration is 12 pieces. The only difference is that breath is a series of work that don't correlate with each other. You're encouraged to experiment and try a lot of new things. And then your concentration is like, this is one topic that I'm extremely interested in and a style that I'm really committed to, and this is me exploring that style and this topic together in 12 different pieces. I am proud, I would say, of the work that I created over the course of the two years. However, I didn't enjoy it, if that makes sense. It, like, it takes so much out of you that the process itself isn't always fun, but when you finish it, you're kind of like, oh shit, like I did that, you know? So yeah, I'm gonna start by showing you the work. And I'm gonna start with my drawing portfolio. Okay, so honestly, I don't think I've kept really good track of the work that I've done over the past two years, so <laughs> I hope most of it is here. So the first piece that I have in my breath was this. I think I did this when I was 15. It's just a pencil drawing, but I'm proud of it. Uh, it turned out cool. It's a little bit different from things that I've done before. That's it. I don't want to talk about for every piece too long because then I'll never get through this video. This piece here, but it was just like a bicycle, but it was like a summer work assignment. Uh, we just had to take a bicycle and like draw it in an interesting way. This was a really small piece that I did, also summer work, but this was um, a Save the Bees piece. And this was around the time where I started hearing a lot about like, you know, the bees are dying, we're all gonna die, and that's gonna be horrible type of thing. I decided to make a piece that would raise awareness about that. This was a Baba Yaga piece, so it's based on like a fairy tale. This is nothing. It's really just a tree and water. These are both about Bangladesh. If you don't know, the fast fashion industry is like a really big problem, but essentially this piece is about one of the worst events that happened as a cause of kind of the horrors of the fast fashion industry and it was essentially like a building, a whole building collapsed with a bunch of workers in it because their calls for help were essentially like ignored and no maintenance was done to the building right and a lot of people were killed. So this is actually like an image from the collapse and then I just put like um, their, one of their work tables like back in as if like, you know, they're covering it up, it doesn't really matter and um, even though so many people died, it's just like get back to work type of a thing. That's kind of like the mentality that a lot of people had. And then in this other piece here, a lot of these are all faces of the victims and them being printed on t-shirts that they would have made. So yeah, that's kind of dark, but I don't know, I'm proud of those pieces. This is just a peacock based on Seven Deadly Sins of Pride, so like Pride for Peacock, it's really pretty basic. And then this is just a figure drawing. This I do have the original in my house, but it's hanging up on the wall downstairs, but it pretty much just looks like this. It's just a still life, it's pretty basic. This is a piece, oh, it's actually right over there. I can go get it. So this is an oil painting. It's based on a weird thing that happened a long time ago that is really hard to explain, but um, I had fun making this and like playing with the oil paint in different ways and layering it was pretty fun and I don't know, I think it could have been a lot better if I planned it out right, but it was just kind of like a spontaneous thing, so yeah, that's it. Alright, so that was my breath. So that's what I sent out as like the experimentation, trying a lot of different things, um, and then I started my concentration. So for my concentration, I'll just read you my statement because that makes it a lot easier. My concentration will visually invest- oh my god, I can't read this. <laughs> my concentration will visually investigate epigenetics, parentheses, alteration in gene function, and parentheses, it will reveal how one's external environment and decision making transforms the genetic behavior inside bodies. The series will reveal the sensitivity of the human body and the dramatic impact of choices on one's health. My aim is to raise awareness of the abundance of potential lying within this field of study for medical advancements and to encourage people to maintain a positive lifestyle through my art. Jesus Christ. Okay, so basically that doesn't, it's so confusing because the topic itself is confusing. So epigenetics is um, a, like a science 
within like genetic science. So what I learned about epigenetics to talk to you about it in like a way you would understand and that I could understand is essentially a s studying how one's life, one's life decisions impacts their health throughout their life and also their offspring's lives. So basically like if you're somebody that eats McDonald's and Wendy's every day, how that will affect you in 20 years, 30 years. There's so much more potential in the field for you know, cures for um, diseases and things like that where if you can figure out like how the genes switched then you can reverse it and like help people and things like that. It's just something I found really interesting and a reason people believe epigenetic science is a thing is because of identical like twins and triplets and things like that. So for identical twins, like their DNA, I really hope I'm not like messing this up because I'm telling this to the world so if this is like not accurate I'm gonna be embarrassed but like identical twins, like their DNA is like the same, right? Like they're identical. So then why at the end of their lives, like why would one get heart disease and one not? Like, you know what I mean? Like why does that happen? That kind of proves that epigenetic science is a thing. All right, so in here is my concentration. So all 12 of my pieces. I started out doing that theme of like identical twins and triplets because I wanted to kind of inform people what the topic was and for me like this was the easiest way to understand it was through this theme of twins and triplets and things like that this is a piece of identical triplets like just after after they're born and obviously all of their dna is the same right so i have these like more epigenetic forms which is like what i researched what they look like and then like obviously your double helix whatever's here with your ats and your cgs and all that nonsense um but yeah it was really fun to use kind of biological forms as kind of like an abstract element and yeah that's it uh the second one i did is kind of playing with this theme again so now these three triplets these identical triplets are i don't know 12 maybe maybe even younger but they're starting to become different people right so green purple blue yeah i don't love this piece because these kind of look like hot dogs and it's not really clear what's going on but you know it's whatever this piece is probably my favorite this piece is more so talking about the potential in the field for medical advancements and things like that because essentially it's like three surgeons and they're like surgically messing with i don't know how you would say it but they're messing with these like epigenetic dna forms and they're like trying to fix something that's damaged so obviously the color red it's like it's bad you know, maybe it's cancer, maybe it's, I don't know, heart disease, it's something that's negative that happened to somebody and they're trying to reverse that. Um, I just think overall the piece turned out really cool. I just like the feeling of it. I think the composition works, so I'm really proud of this one. This piece is about like pregnancy with epigenetics, so like, and like the offspring thing, I can, literally can't talk about this because it's killing me. I don't have the brain power to really talk about this right now. You know the story, like the mother's not supposed to drink when they're pregnant, not supposed to eat bad foods, you know, like stay on a good diet because the baby will be healthier. It's because of like epigenetic theories that, you know, if you practice this lifestyle, your baby's not going to develop correctly because you're not giving it the things it needs to develop correctly. Like I have all these flowers that are kind of dying and things like that. Um, honestly, I don't even <laughs> like really know why I made this piece. I think it just kind of came to me, but like, it's kind of saying like, if all these flowers are gonna die, like what's the, what's gonna happen to the baby, right? So this piece is a little bit more like conceptual, but still kind of talking about the um, topic itself. So I think when you start to like realize how important every life decision you make is to your health, it really becomes like kind of confusing and you think about it so much. And like, I think for me, like researching it, I was kind of like, oh shoot, like that's not good. <laughs> so you start to kind of get lost in it and you're like, well, what am I doing that's right? What am I doing that's wrong? How can I fix this thing that's happening um, that I'm doing to myself and then you know I kind of created this as like it's kind of like a jungle like how do I choose um, between right and wrong and how am I going to benefit myself in the best way that I can so that's what that's about this is kind of dealing with the same thing like how to make the right decisions I'm kind of like trapped in it um, I don't know this is kind of a BS piece I just kind of did it because I needed to get it done this one is about vaping and jeweling and stuff like that because everybody kind of knows it's not good for you but they kind of do it anyway and it's kind of like cigarettes happening all over again um, so this is just kind of like a warning like you saw what happened to people who smoked three packs a day uh, their whole lives you know what I mean so why would you do that to yourself if it's gonna have a similar outcome you know this one is talking about war so there was actually a study like an epigenetic study that was done about how war impacts the soldiers themselves but then their kids and this is like more so talking about stress so not something that you're eating or consuming but 
how a stressful environment can actually also make alterations. Um, this is an old woman who regrets the life decisions she made because she realized her epigenetic whatevers are all screwed up. It's sad. This one's about cancer, and there's figures kind of walking through the cancer cells, struggling to hold up their DNA um, because of the burden that is now themselves because of the life choices that they made. This piece is about third world countries um, that are crop producing, um, and a lot of them are using really toxic pesticides without proper safety measures, so they're inhaling them in large quantities, and then when they go to have children, Many of their children die from very young ages um, and are quite disabled because of the toxins that have entered their bodies. Um, then this piece is really not significant at all. I did it the night before we had to send out our portfolios. It's total BS and I don't like it. I don't show it to people, but here you go. So that's all of it. God bless. All right, so I did score a five on my drawing portfolio. So happy about that, I guess. Um, I don't actually like the college board or believe in anything they believe in. So a five isn't like the biggest deal for me, but, <laughs> but also, um, yeah, it's kind of nice to be like, yeah, you did it, you know, so whatever. Now we'll talk about my 2D portfolio, which was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. My breath included work that was mostly from my freshman year. So most of my breath for junior year, I made as a 15 year old. No, I think it was 14 when I made most of this work. My breath starts with this piece here. Um, I call him trumpet player, as creative as it gets. I actually have a good print of it here. So this is actually a better, um, what do you call it? Better picture of it. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with this piece. It's just a random collage. This is a piece that I did for a movie. No, it was a documentary, but I never got paid for it. Still salty about it. This is just a random piece I did about reading Lois's book. This, like, I got this book my freshman year. Um, this piece, um, it's just a room. I was really kind of into designing interior spaces for a while there. Pretty fun, like designing a space for a character that doesn't exist. Like you just do the room, not the character. It's kind of fun. Uh, then I have a lemon tree. I really like lemons. This piece is, um, it's about, I can't even tell you what it's about, but she's eating candy and she's spitting it out on the canvas. Um, this is a portrait of my mom. I actually have the original right over there. This really shouldn't even be in a 2D portfolio. It's a drawing, like I painted this. Um, this should be in a drawing portfolio. Whatever, it shouldn't be in a 2D portfolio, but it is. Then I have this piece, which I did towards the end of the year. This is about a song that I really like. It means a lot to me. Uh, this that I did freshman year. It's literally, I don't know what it is. Um, and this I also did freshman year. This is my freshman art class table that I would sit at. And that's my whole breath. God bless, that was short. Yeah, so I... Yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna go through my concentration, but I forgot to read my statement, so I'm gonna do that now. So basically, my statement says, my concentration will capture the beauty often overlooked in a mess. Society tends to look at clutter through a negative lens, which shapes people's perspective to denounce it as unattractive. Through my work, I want to show the viewer how the complexity in a mess is beautiful. Through a variety of mediums, I will work from original photographs, life, and imagination to depict the in intricate designs in a mess. In drawing messes, I hope to change people's view of what beauty can be. So that statement is pretty much complete BS. I was really just drawing clutter and having fun. So that's it. Decided to focus on finding a composition within basically junk, clutter, and like a mess. So the reason I had this idea is because the year before, I was keeping this little sketchbook. <clears throat> it's a Fabriano. It's really thin. Um, the pages are pretty thin, but it's just like a nice little book. And I was just drawing random stuff, like stuff that you wouldn't show anybody, just like fun stuff. And then I just started drawing like my room and like all the messes that were in it. I have like a lot of these. So this is like my shelf and this was like I had papers all over the floor that I was going to put on my wall and like my plant and like a table and a bunch of papers and just like just a ton of super loose drawings that if I didn't tell you what it was, you wouldn't be able to tell what it was because it's just like messy. And I like that about it. I don't know why it was fun to draw them. But like these are like messy spaces. Yeah, so I couldn't really tell you why I like this, the look of it, but I just, I don't know. There's something about it that it was fun to draw. It was loose and I didn't have to think about it. It was something that just kind of came naturally and it was something that I enjoyed doing. So I decided to do my entire concentration off of that. So the first pieces that I did, I did on canvas, right? So I was drawing like my room, which was a mess. And this is like my easel and my backpack and my side table and stuff like that. And like trying to abstractify it 
but also make it really cool. Like that's what my kind of vision was. But like very quickly, I kind of like lost track of that cool like abstract side. And I was literally just like, oh my shit. <laughs> I was just like painting messes, right? So this is really uninteresting. I don't know, there's nothing that exciting about this. I got really stuck again and I was really upset and I was like, this isn't working, I'm gonna drop out of this class. So editing this, I realized I didn't explain the situation very well. Um, basically, my first concentration idea was a fail and I had a couple pieces done, but it didn't work out and I stopped. And then I tried to do this one and I came really close to failing on this one again because I just felt like it wasn't working. And I was just in kind of a rough spot for about like two months, not really turning in assignments or getting any work done. And it was kind of a mess for me and I was really close to dropping out of the class itself. Um, so that's it. That's that's what I was talking about when I said this was a really hard portfolio to complete. If you guys want to hear that story in depth, I really could film an entire video just talking about what happened in detail because it's kind of funny and kind of horrible at the same time. So if you're interested in that, just comment or like this video and let me know and I'll film a whole video uh, just kind of talking about that experience and what I learned from it. Um, and I was really close to doing it. I had like so many mental breakdowns. You can ask all of my friends in the class and my teacher. It was a mess. But finally i hit this like a weird and light of inspiration and there was like this one weekend where i made like three pieces and was starting a fourth it started with this piece right here all of a sudden i just found this really cool style it kind of came together i don't really know how to describe it yeah super random just random pieces of paper and then i took a colored pencil and drew on top of it but this actually ended up being the cover of the zine that i did later on then the next two are actually kind of like together they're like sister pieces i guess you could say like siblings it's a diptych not even but i like the style so i did it twice um both of these are of my sister's room actually this time i was kind of just playing with color and shapes and trying to again make it kind of abstract but also clear enough where you can kind of tell what it is. Um, the next piece that I did, uh, the print is actually on my wall. It's this one here. This is of my friend Tina's garage. Um, so I was in need of some reference pictures and she took this really good one. And so I had a lot of fun playing with uh, all the different colors in it, like blues, reds. It's basically a primary color palette, uh, just a little bit different. The next one was the sneaker piece. So this is just the mudroom in my house where we have kind of all our shoes laid out everywhere. It's always a mess like this. Not, <laughs> not always, but a good amount of the time it's kind of like scattered like this. Um, and originally I had just colored all the shoes in and it wasn't really sure what to do with it but I ended up layering this cool tile background on it to just to give it some more life. So yeah, I am happy with this piece. I think the composition is cool. So the reference that I used for this picture was taken from the place where I teach and also take art classes. Um, it's like the back closet where we keep a lot of the supplies and it's always kind of like a mess and I just liked all of the harder lines that kind of created a geometric composition. Um, so I had a lot of fun again with this one playing with the colors and especially the shadows to kind of create more forms It wasn't just about the objects But the way that they kind of sat in their space and the way that the light hit it and then this one I have on normal video So now we can jump back to that. This is just a random group of supplies that was in one of the art rooms at my school This is my closet. Um, this piece people really like but I don't, I don't know. I like this a lot I don't like up here, but whatever um, And then I have this piece which is my Fruit Loops piece, which doesn't really fit with the other ones, but I still threw it in there. Um, and then these two, yeah. So this is the zine. If you don't know what a zine is, it's essentially like a magazine, but it's really small, so it's like, it's just zine. For years, I wanted to make one of these, and I was always put like pressure on it to be really cool, so I never did it. Um, so I finally actually made one. I was about halfway through my, like, my concentration, and I was like, I'm gonna do this. And then it kept me motivated to finish, because I was really excited about having one of these. My favorite pieces are all on here um, and it just folds up nice like a book. So it's called Mishmash because I didn't want to call it like mess or clutter and I like looked up synonyms with my friend and the, like Mishmash came up and we were like that's the one. Yeah so I'm really proud of this. I'll flip through it now. Um, I gave away about 60 of these at my school art show. I printed out and folded them all myself and I like gave them all out. It was awesome. Um, people seem to really like them. But yeah it's just a really simple thing but it kept me motivated throughout the year. So yeah I really like that. This is like my proudest, one of my proudest uh, little things that I've done. Um, and I did end up getting a five on that portfolio as well. I just got that back actually a little while ago. Again, I don't like the college board and I don't really believe in what they think, but um, it's still nice to be recognized. The other thing that got cut out when I was trying to film this video the first time, so I was trying to end this video by talking about the lesson that I learned from this, which is that trying to make everything perfect and trying to create art that's impressive it's kind of the worst way to do it. But it seems like it's great because 
that's the kind of mindset I had when I was doing my drawing portfolio. And because then I had work like the triplet piece and the surgeon piece that I'm really proud of because um, I was really trying to like show off my skills, right? And I was trying to not put it on, but I was trying to be something great. For this concentration, it was so different because I didn't have, number one, the time to do that or the energy to do that. And I had to just create art just to make it and to get it done and to try new things that I didn't really know would work and I didn't expect to be impressive. And that change in mindset really helped me make work that was so different from anything that I'd made before. And I realized how unhealthy it was to always try and create work that other people would like. You know what I'm saying? So not everybody's gonna like abstract messes. You know what I mean? Like not everybody's going to gravitate towards that. The art that I was making the year before is art that people can respect more, I guess. And that was what I felt comfortable in because people think that's cool, you know? So now I kind of know both areas and hopefully I can kind of meet like a middle ground with that. Yeah, I definitely learned that I can't do that because it limits you. You limit yourself so much by telling yourself you can only make art a certain way. And you learn the most when you try something new. So I did learn something even though it was a really challenging year because you learn from failure more than anything else. I think that's all I have to say. Okay, I've tried like six times now to fill this outro and it's each time is so bad. I can't whisper even though it's, kind of, it's late. It's late at night. Anyways, uh, my camera card is full so I'm not gonna be able to record on there anymore because I'm too lazy to empty it. But basically, I hope you enjoyed looking at the art that I've done the past two years in AP. Hopefully, I wrapped up what I was trying to say. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Hopefully, very soon. I've already got another video in progress, so there's things coming. Uh, and that's all. That's all I have to say. Goodbye.